horror sequels. Why are they kind of hit and miss? So, I have been thinking a lot about, like, the fact that most horror films start out good, you know? Most of the first iterations of the franchise start out relatively well, and then they kind of just go all the way down, with rare exceptions. So, uh, today I'm going to kind of just explore horror sequels in general, and I'm going to talk about how, and probably why, is the better question, they get so bad over time. And I know what you're thinking, the obvious answer to this is people get greedy, the studio gets too much control, the MPAA, you know, wants to cut all the blood and tits out of it. Yes, but also people just get lazy. The, the people making the film get lazy because of it, because they just have to show another sequel to this <sighs> franchise that's been running for the past 10 years and it's just like beating a dead horse with a stick. It is becoming more and more of an issue and unfortunately this hasn't died down over the years. Like we still get bad lazy sequels, not from horror films as much nowadays, but from, you know, superhero movies and, uh, well, Transformers and action movies and, you know, this isn't really anything that has died down in any way. People are still going to see these films, even though they know it's garbage. And that is what the issue is most of the time. So to kind of make my reputation slightly worse about throwing away physical media, I'm not going to do that this video, but here are some horror sequels that I would like to talk about. Um, first of all, I mean, we know, we know these ones. So, here's me saying that I won't throw them away and this is Aliens. Everybody talks about aliens. It seems like whenever someone is like, horror sequels are bad, everyone points to this one. This one is cheating, you know? This one is just way too good for you to make a proper argument about horror sequels being okay or bad or whatever. I'm not throwing it away. I was about to, but I'm not going to do that. Predator 2. This is where we get a bit iffy. Fight me on this. I think this is a better Predator film than the first one is. As far as like world building and lore and and everything to do with that, I think this is a much better Predator film than the first one is. Granted, I think the first one is a better action film, but I think this one is just a better sci-fi Predator film overall. Pretty fucking good. Texas Chainsaw 2. Now, I know last video was me saying that, oh, Texas Chainsaw is actually good, and I agree with that, but then I still haven't given this a rewatch. I have seen this a total number of once. I really should give this another chance as well. But did you know this had a sequel? I think everybody knows that this has a sequel. The ones that I've talked about so far are either, you know, universally accepted as good or controversial a little bit, where a lot of people like it, a lot of people think it's inferior to the first one. It's nothing outrageously terrible. Like, I don't think either Texas Chainsaw 2 or Predator 2 is outrageously terrible compared to the first one. There's no way it is. Um, and now this is where the line between good and bad sequels gets a bit blurred, because we have one of the best horror sequels of all time, Child's Play 2, which is a sequel to Child's Play, would you have guessed, which is universally beloved as far as I can tell from the community and I spend a lot of time in the community so I think a lot of people like this film and with good reason this is a really good fucking horror film but then in the same franchise we have Seed of Chucky which I think recently has gotten a lot of resurgence and people kind of appreciating it a little more um, but putting these two side by side you can tell that something has gone wrong I think Bride of Chucky got off on Scream because Scream was kind of a horror comedy parody but it was still horror. Bride of Chucky came along and did that and it was good and then the studio and Don Mancini was like oh yeah let's do that just turn it up to 11 and then, then we got Seed of Chucky which is as far as films go as far as you know like accepting the filmmaking um, and storytelling aspect of 
films in general. This is not a good film. But, it is a good film in terms of fun value. I think this is a very fun film, and I will fight anyone who disagrees with me that tells me this. This is not a fun film, and they cannot stand to watch it. Give this another chance. You will regret it. On the other hand, Child's Play 2, amazing. Um, now, is corporate greed the answer to this? Probably? Um, they wanted to make more money, uh, and then this killed the franchise for like 10 years. And then we got Curse of Chucky, which rejuvenated everything again. So the Child's Play franchise is a bit of a unique one, where there's a lot of good sequels and a lot of bad sequels as well. It's not just all downhill continuously. It's it's like a, uh, you know, it's it's a spiky, it's a spiky franchise. I don't know if you knew this, but did you know that Psycho has a sequel? Psycho 2, with Anthony Perkins, made in the 80s, and it's actually good. Would you have guessed that the great, you know, Hitchcock, I mean, he would have hated the idea of, you know, there being a sequel to Psycho, but I think if he would have seen this film, he would have appreciated it, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what the man was like. It's Hitchcock. He's... Ugh. Psycho 2. Most people don't even know this fucking exists because nobody talks about it. Or at least most people don't talk about it. But did you also know that there is a Psycho 3 and 4? I mean, I did, but that's because I'm a fucking nerd. See, a lot of films get lost in, in translation, you know, a lot, like, a lot of films, they come out and then everybody forgets about them because it wasn't that memorable or not many people saw it and it just gets lost. And this is one of those gems that I love. This is, this is a great horror film. I'm not going to throw the, the Blu-ray away. Did you also know? I don't even know how many people know of Reanimator. I think it's one of those lesser known horror films as a whole, I think. First one is pretty, pretty good. Did you know that there are two sequels? I bet you, I bet you that you didn't. Uh, especially about the third one. Nobody knows about this fucking film. I mean, I guess maybe recently because Arrow Video picked it up, but before that, nobody knew it fucking existed. Nobody fucking watched it. But it's fun. I think all the reanimated films have a certain Lovecraftian, I mean it makes sense because Lovecraft, Lovecraftian vibe to them, you know, and it's very charming and silly and it's a lot of dark comedy in there and it's just, it's, it's 10 out of 10 on the fun factor, I, I'd say about 7 out of 10 on the, on the story and about 5 out of 10 on the filmmaking. Bride of Reanimator is exactly what it sounds like. The re one of the reanimators, because there's technically two of them in this film now, gets a bride made for him and everything goes completely batshit, as you'd expect. And then, Beyond Reanimator set in a prison, with Jeffrey Combs carrying the entire fucking film on his back, and it's amazing. And it's really, really funny at times, and also really, really bad at other times. If I had to pick one, I think this is the most fun out of all of them. And I will fight anyone in the comments who, who says otherwise, like, I think this is the most rewatchable and the most fun out of all of them. And I love this film. Mwah. That's my hot take for this video. I went to, I went to a store that sells physical media. There you go. Um, hello. I am here to look at films. Yes. There's a new Halloween trilogy. Um, it's okay. I've never seen the new Exorcist. Um, I, I, what else is here? Uh, Evil Dead 2, best horror sequel of all time, probably. Um, God, Sinister 2. Eh, yeah. Scream 6, there you go. That's a film, Saw X. <laughs> Fucking Saw X. Yeah. God, I feel like I'm on a time crunch, I'm really not. Um, a Quiet Place Part 2. It's on sale, because it's probably not very good. I'm going to put it back, because no one, nobody watched The Quiet Place Part 2. Um, Escape Room 2, Tournament of Champions. Oh, we've seen this one. The cover is just so off-putting. Here's something that should have gotten a sequel, but never did. Never got a sequel. Um, God, there's so many horror films that I haven't seen. 
the new Hellraiser remake where Pinhead is a woman. And I made some discoveries there and I found sequels to things that I didn't even know had sequels. So that's exactly what you need to go out and do because there are a lot of films that are being kind of overlooked and never given a chance, like Beyond Reanimator and like Psycho 2. I mean, both of these are Arrow Video. If you just go in the Arrow Video section, or if you just go on their website, you will find sequels like The Exorcist 3. Yeah, that's, that's all I have to say for this video. Appreciate horror sequels. Um, give them a chance. They're probably going to be bad, but give them a chance. And maybe you'll regret it. Probably, but maybe you won't. Maybe you'll have a good time with it. And that's that's my lesson for you today. That's that's what you need to go out and do. You need to appreciate films a little more. And I will see you all in the next video, whenever that is. Thank you for watching. I love you all. And before I go, before I before I um, please like, comment, and subscribe. It, it helps the channel out a ton. Um, we're nearly at 300 subscribers which I know looking back, maybe that's gonna be a wild thing to say in the future, but yes, please subscribe, comment, and, and let me know what kind of horror sequel you didn't know existed or you kind of underlooked or over, like underappreciated or stuff like that. Personally, I think Friday the 13th Part 2 is one of the best horror sequels of all time, which I know is probably underappreciated because everybody goes to Part 4. I'm rambling. Goodbye.